Hello and welcome back to the blush studio. Today I have another watercolor tutorial for you specifically. We're going to be creating a watercolor monarch butterfly today. This one will be a little bit different than the tutorials I've done in the past. I've had a lot of requests lately for kind of real-time tutorials rather than the more sped up versions that I have done over the past year. So I thought we'd give it a try. Be sure to let me know what you think, um, if you prefer the shorter videos or the longer videos. Okay, to start off, I'm actually going to take a trick that I discovered recently. I'm going to be using masking fluid, and if you've never used masking fluid or learned of the simple trick to um, using masking fluid without ruining your brushes, I do have a full video on that where I kind of troubleshoot things and figure things out, so I am using that method here. Um, so I'll have that video linked down below if you're interested in that. Um, but I'm just going to speed up this part. I know I said it would be real time, but I'm just playing, applying the masking fluid where those iconic white dots are for the monarch butterfly. Um, the great thing about this masking fluid, if you're not familiar with it, is that it acts as a removable um, resist. So the watercolor, the water, will not adhere to the paper where the masking fluid is. But then later you can remove the masking fluid in order to reveal the paper left untouched underneath. So you can do this really at any point of the process. So you can, if you've painted a wash down and you want to save that color, you can add the masking fluid to it. And then when you remove it, that color will be saved. So for this time, um, because it's a monarch butterfly, they have those dark outer wing sections that have a lot of those white dots. I'm also adding in highlights. There are white dots on the monarch butterfly's body itself, but I'm also adding highlights because their body is very dark, so I don't want it to get I don't want to get too carried away and miss out on those beautiful details. So once that is dried, it's time to clean off my palette a little bit. I did recreate my palette. So if you're interested in seeing like a full like how I set up my palette and seeing the colors that I have included, let me know. I'd be happy to create a video um, based off of that. I'm just kind of give you my tips there. So I'm starting, I want to mimic the color of that rusty orange that you can kind of see in between um, the brown and the yellow that I'm mixing. So I start off with yellow ochre. Usually if I'm starting off with a warm yellow, I definitely pull in my yellow ochre. The raw sienna is also a great option, but yellow ochre was what I went for this time. And I went with my deep scarlet red. So I'm mixing those two together. Um, if you want a similar effect, alizarin crimson is very close. To desaturate the whole thing, I added a little bit of green, and that just helps to bring it down so it's not quite so bright. Now I'm going to test it out here. I just wanted to show you an example of how I will troubleshoot and um, look at different colors when I'm mixing them and see how to create a match. So on the left you can see the color I just mixed, and on the right is the color I'm trying to match just for this example. Um, because I can see automatically that the one on the right is way more yellow, I'm going to add a little bit of that lemony yellow hue and see how that compares now. So that is a ton closer, but I was a little too red or a little too yellow still. So added a little bit of that red back in and I'm thinking that that is going to dry right about where I want it to be. So that's just one way that you can Kind of mix colors and make sure that you're going to end up with the color you want. I like to have a test sheet, especially if I'm working with new colors, and kind of rusty reds or oranges are out of my normal uh, color palette, so I like to play around with that a little bit more. Now we're going to move on to the actual Monarch itself. So I am just doing a very light wash. I really want this to be light and um, very modern with its loose and fluid uh, color. So that's one of the reasons I'm starting before adding the detail of the black so that I can have the watercolor kind of move in and out very naturally. So I want there to be kind of some more organic blends and um, gradients with this piece. Now if you know me and my style, I am generally pretty tight so I actually didn't stick so much with this lighter style um, the way I was originally planning. but. If you're interested in doing that, this is how I would have gone about it if I had stuck to it. So again, just adding a light wash of color. So each time you create a layer of watercolor paint, it's called a pass. And the first pass is usually called a wash. It's where it's mostly water, and then there's but there is some pigment to it. And it's really just defining the overall color tone 
and establishing some base value. So areas that are going to be darker, like the outside of the wings there, I'm going to make those darker to start with um, more interior part of the wings I'm going to allow to be lighter um, just because that's kind of what I'm going for with that depth. This will dry, like all watercolor, will dry much lighter than it is starting out. Um, so another thing with a wash is you usually want to wait and allow that to dry in between your passes. So I'm just going back in and adding a little bit more pigment on the inside where I want it to be a little bit deeper. Um, just to kind of build things up, experimenting a little bit with how I want the color to fade. I didn't want it to be a complete gradient and so I added a little bit more on that left side just to kind of add some variety and some visual interest. Okay, now that that has had some time to dry, you can see that the color is much less intense. So I will be going back in and brightening this up in a little bit, but first I want to kind of jump around a little bit. Um, I'm still trying to figure out at this point how I want to pursue the wings because I do like this looser style. That was originally what I was going for, but I want to match the body and with the wings. So I decided to jump in on the body of the butterfly and just see how that came about and then kind of like if you're doing your makeup and you know you want to go with a bright lipstick or something like that you might put that on first to make sure you don't go overboard with blush um, that's kind of what I'm doing here so I was like okay let's see where this body goes and then we'll move forward with the wings so I'm going in I did pull a black paint for this one um, but I was mixing it in with that orange um, if you've done a watercolor tutorial with me before you know I like to work with a limited palette I really like the unity that's created with that and so um, when I know that I want a really dark color almost black color but I want it to be a little warmer why not pull in the color that's already for the wings and create that un unity within the entire piece so here I'm just kind of building up and continuing to add detail to the body itself so I want it to be nice and rich but I'm also going to go through and as it's drying add a little bit more of that dark saturated color to the outside. Um, that will kind of create a shadow and give it a more three-dimensional look um, by adding that modeling in. So you can see that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start defining the edge and I'm going to deepen up that color that I've mixed um, while I'm going over the edge. So one nice thing is that because that color is a little bit cooler than the body, that will also help to create a modeling effect. So a cooler color will fall more towards the background. Your eye just automatically pushes it back while a warmer color comes towards you. So that's one way to kind of cheat the system. If you have a pretty neutral base and you're trying to create that more three-dimensional look, add a little bit of some blue, you know, just a touch, just enough to kind of um, give that color an overall cooler feel and that will help to create that effect that you're going for. So I ended up going back and I added water to the center of the body because I really felt like that just got too dark overall. So I added a little bit of water to that just to kind of loosen up the paint underneath and then after wiping my brush off I picked it up and that kind of created that highlight towards that center of the body. Now originally I was thinking I would start adding some of the visual texture to the wings, but I ended up deciding, you know what, this color was not deep enough, is not what I was going for, so I decided to add another pass over top of the one that I already created. Um, the nice thing is that even though um, I'm basically painting over what I already did, because we have that wash and it was very intentional, um, that will show through as this next pass. So some of the deeper side, some of the deeper sections will automatically show up. They'll also serve as an excellent guide while I'm painting. So right here I'm pulling in some more cadmium red because I definitely noticed when the paint dried that it wasn't bright enough for me. Um, I wanted to add a little bit more of a pop of orange rather than kind of that desaturated, rusty color. Um, so 
On top of the paint that I had already mixed, I added a little bit of that cadmium red because it's nice and bright and so that will help to kind of bring all the color out that I'm going for. Kind of the more iconic monarch butterfly orange. Just picking up some of that paint and tapping it into the sections of the paper that are already wet and that will just help to deposit more color. So I started doing these flicking motions because that kind of mimics the texture at a more detailed point of the actual monarch butterfly, um, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. So now I'm starting on the wings themselves, the black section of the wings, and you'll be able to see that resist in action in just a minute. I decided to dive right into some of this detail because I was really excited about it. So with this brush, I was really struggling to get that fine line that I wanted. Um, I believe this is a six. Uh, I am going to be purchasing a thinner brush for this, but I don't have a detail brush in my actual watercolor brush collection. So I went back to one of my more standard brushes, which can be used for like acrylic. And I went with something that's a little bit stiffer and um, that worked a little bit better. I just found that this really needed that thin point and just that stiffness in order to, create, to get those lines that I was going for. So loaded up some paint on there, and I'm jumping around in my painting. Um, you do not have to do this, I just find that it keeps me interested, and I just don't like to follow rules of like paint, you know, painting one complete section and then moving on to the next. So don't feel like you have to. If you don't feel like working on the black part, go ahead and keep adding layers to you know, the main section of the orange color if you want. So this ended up being pretty time consuming, um, just kind of filling in this section. I did continue to mix that uh, black with the orange and the rusty color that I used for the body. I just had a heavier concentration of the black for the wings themselves where the body had a little bit more of a brown. Um, that kind of helps to differentiate it. It also helps the wings to kind of fall back a little bit. This part was really uh, pretty slow going, but it's such an iconic part of the monarch butterfly. You want to make sure that you get those different sections um, illustrated out correctly. So move slowly, move your paper around if you need to. If you're stuck on an easel, um, don't be afraid to kind of shift your seat to get that angle that you need in order to create those smooth lines. Part of that is because I want to make sure that the orange underneath is covered up. Um, you don't want that to show through or have an awkward layer, but I also want it to be a very smooth transition. Um, so I'm just continuing to build that up as I need to. Um, I will have to later in this video kind of go over the part on the lower wing on this right hand side just to kind of smooth that out because I found that it um, dried kind of blotchy and that's not really what I'm going for. I want it to be very smooth and um, purposeful. So you can see the masking fluid here in action. So each one of those white sections is where I placed some masking fluid before. And so it has resisted that paint magically. And I'll be able to take that off later to reveal perfect white paper underneath. So this is one of the reasons I really encourage my students to have a very detailed sketch before they start their painting, even though um, we lighten it with an eraser and then go in. Um, it's really, it really helps to make this 
this process go a lot faster because I can see a little bit of my pencil sketch underneath so I don't have to look at the actual butterfly quite as much in order to get an accurate representation of the detail on the wings. So you can already see there toward the bottom um, where it started to get a little bit just patchy. Um, some areas are drying and they're a little, they were thicker with the paint and some were lighter. So I go back in before everything's done and just kind of do one more very light pass over it and that kind of helps everything to blend together and look more purposeful rather than look like I was painting in small sections, which is what I did, but you don't want that to be what your painting looks like in the end. So painting tells a story, we want it to tell a good story. <laughs> Now switching over to the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing in a mirror image for the wings on the left. Now normally in my videos, this is the part where I would speed up quite a bit and um, or even just cut it out and cut to a point where I've painted the other side. If however you prefer this real time, whether you're trying to paint along or um, you just like being able to see all of the extra detail additionally, um, let me know down below. I would really love to hear your thoughts. That will really affect how I edit my videos in the future. Um, I do plan to still have shorter videos and longer videos kind of mixed in, but I would love to hear what you would prefer to see. Especially I do have another butterfly video coming up here soon. Um, and so I'd love to show you more of what you're looking for, whether that is just kind of snippets or if it's something a little bit more detailed like this. So let me know in the comment section down below and I'll keep that in mind for the next video. Now you'll notice with this brush I have to go back in and dip in for paint and water more frequently. That's because this isn't a specific watercolor brush. Watercolor brushes are designed to hold the water longer and so I'd be able to fill in almost this whole wing with just one dip. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you find that you are struggling with your watercolor and just really frustrated with how wet the brush is or how quickly you oversaturate your paintings. Try working with more of like an acrylic brush or more of an all-purpose brush rather than watercolor until you kind of get the hang of it. Um, I know a lot of people say to dive into the expensive brushes right away, but I actually think that there's a lot that can be learned through um, just using more standard methods. Um, and then once you have more confidence and you know how the paint actually moves, then you can look into getting um, a brush that would hold more of that water when you know what to expect with watercolor itself. All right, so I actually went on live on Facebook, or not Facebook, Instagram, and just did kind of a mini tutorial. You see on the left, that is um, still pretty flat and desaturated. I knew that I wanted to brighten everything up, so on Facebook, or I keep saying Facebook Live, on Instagram Live, um, I went on and I just did this experiment. So I have this lemon yellow hue paint, and I'm doing a light wash. So. This is a mostly dry brush with some of the lemon yellow on there and I'm just doing stripes and that will help to create kind of a textured look which is kind of what I'm going for with this wing anyway um, but will also help to brighten up that color a little bit. Now I am going to be digitizing this painting but I didn't think that it was, I don't know, I like to kind of troubleshoot and correct things on my actual paper. I feel like um, it helps me develop as an artist and um, it's just great to, I don't know, it's a great feeling to know that you fix something, even though I could take it into Photoshop and just up the brightness and saturation. 
So going through with that lemon yellow and just kind of brightening everything, I'm really starting kind of in a consistent corner. And then I'm going through with, again, an almost dry brush with just a little bit of that pigment that I was using before. And I'm just building up that color in order to create more of a shadow. And that just kind of gives me some visual interest. So if you're interested in kind of like little tidbits or you know like live in action as I'm troubleshooting something, um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'll have the link down below. Um, I try and do that every once in a while. It depends on how uh, much my husband is home because I don't. I guess I don't like recording when he's around. <laughs> so which do you like better? Do you prefer the more textured side, which is what I'm adding in now with kind of that deeper hue being kind of dry brushed on top? Or do you prefer, did you prefer it when it was a lot softer? So that upper left hand wing is still kind of in that position now. Um, what do you think? I'm Again, I have a whole series of butterflies that I'm creating. I'm contemplating actually doing another Monarch where it's just a little bit softer, um, kind of like you see um, what I was originally planning to do. Um, I do have another video coming out of the swallow, the yellow and blue swallowtail. Um, that you can see next to this monarch, um, but that won't be for another couple of weeks. If you do want to see that, um, let me know down below or give this video a thumbs up. The better that this video does, the more excited and encouraged I'll be to share more butterfly videos in the future. So now I'm going through and you can see the patchiness on that right side. Um, so I'm going through and I'm just adding like a light wash of that warm brown color just to kind of help everything to blend together. I do want to include some pigment, but not a ton, because again, I'm not really going for black here. Um, I'm going for the, like, that warmer, deep tone. So instead of just doing water that will like pick everything up and really make it a lot lighter, I'm adding a little bit of pigment to it. Once that's complete, I take off the masking fluid on the body and I'm adding another light wash to that. So this is, even though those are highlights and they were saved beautifully, I don't want them to be white because um, highlights aren't naturally white. They are just a lighter hue of the color underneath. So I'm deepening that up a little bit, kind of adding the modeling that we did originally. So the edges are much darker and just trying to build up the color in the way that I'm looking for it to go. Now to take off the masking fluid, I actually use this small eraser that I have. I'll have it linked down below. I use it quite a bit, so if you followed any of my drawing tutorials, you'll recognize it right away. But I like how it naturally sticks to the adhesive or the masking fluid and just helps to pull it up. Now you can just massage it like I did with my hand there, but because I went over and did a couple of layers with the deep, um, that black color, I didn't want to pick up any of that pigment. So just to be careful, um, I ended up using this eraser. You can use another eraser. Um, you could use a pencil. Um, that would work as well. Um, just like a pencil eraser, that would be fine. Um, but I do have this one, so I ended up using that. I felt that, um, especially with working with these smaller details, since there wasn't like a point where I could like grab and pull up a larger section of the masking fluid, this worked really well. And as you can see, um, that's just coming up and revealing white paper underneath, which is exactly what it was supposed to do. But this is a little bit boring, so I am going to speed up through this and we'll get to the good stuff. Now, for the final touches, um, Monarch Butterflies, the, all of their spots are not pure white. So they have like some more golden tones with there. So I took that orange color that we originally created and I mixed a lot more of that lemon yellow hue into it um, to really lighten it and give it more of a golden tone. Oh look, I found another bit of masking fluid that was buried. So some of the pigment kind of built up and stayed on top, but the great thing is once I find where that little piece is, I can kind of massage the masking fluid up and it's white again. So again, going back to um, just adding kind of the more golden tones and some more layering in the details. Um, so I actually ended up adding a few more golden sections than are actually on a real monarch butterfly, at least the one that I was looking at. So the ones I'm painting right now, those were that kind of golden lemony yellow color. Um, but these ones kind of down the side of the wing and at the bottom later, um, those weren't on the monarch that I was illustrating, but I like that it softened everything a little bit so that those spots weren't quite so harsh. Um, again, that's what artistic prerogative is, so you can kind of do what you want um, to get the effect that you're going for. I did also go through 
adding some black paint and I um, kind of tightened up some of these larger spots. So the masking fluid got a little bit thick toward the end here. And so I had to kind of minimize those and um, divide them a little bit so that it was not quite so polka dotty. So it's a little more realistic, a little more delicate and interesting. So that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Happy painting!